In this video, we will test the magnification difference of three macro lenses. The Sony 70 to 200 f4 G Mark II with a 0.5 time magnification ratio. The Sony 90mm f2.8 macro with a 1 time magnification ratio. And the Lava 100mm f2.8 macro with a 2 times magnification ratio. I respect your time and I won't let you wait until the end of the video to see the result. Here are the three pictures I took with the three lenses and as expected, the Lava is the clear winner here providing a much larger image and more details, but not without caveats. More on this later. CineQuest is the series where I share my process as a student of filmmaking and videography. In the last episode, I tried macro videography for the first time and went out in the forest to shoot small stuff with my camera and a lens I specifically bought for this purpose, the Lawa 100mm f2.8 2 times macro. I bought this lens for its 2 times macro capabilities, figuring that a bigger magnification ratio meant better results and more details on my subjects. But is that true? I was looking for a video on YouTube where I could find out how a different magnification ratio would affect my pictures, but I haven't found any so I decided to make this video. We will compare these three lenses and we resolve the difference that the magnification ratio makes on our pictures. This conflict will be today's superstar. I've set a little stage for our conflict and I will keep the exposition consistent throughout the test. However, we're not testing the lens's qualities here. I want to see how big things look through each of these glasses. For the sake of transparency, these are the camera settings. I used a Sony a7S III in manual mode, set on a tripod. The Sony a7R5 and even the a7 IV have a focus bracketing feature that allows the camera to adjust the focus automatically throughout the range. My camera doesn't have that, so I'm using this Nisi focusing rail. With each lens, the idea is to get as close to the cornflake as possible. I will focus on the outer front part of the subject and use the focusing rail to shift the focus to the very end of the cornflake, taking a picture at every step of the process. This technique is called focus bracketing. I will throw all these pictures at a focus stacking software, like Photoshop or Helicon Focus. The result will be one merged image with our subject looking sharp throughout. I will start with the Sony 70 to 200 f4 G Mark II with a 0.5 time magnification ratio. I'm using a 2 second timer on my shutter. The final result would be better if you keep everything still and as stable as possible. And because my environment is a little bit shaky, I've set a timer on my camera of 2 seconds. So I'll make sure that everything is still and then I won't breathe until I get the picture. I love this lens. It is the most versatile lens in my kit and I always carry it whenever possible. Not only is it an excellent quality telephoto lens, but it is also compact and does macro. What more do you want? Hey, I have a full video about this lens that you can find here. It took 19 pictures to cover the entire focus range and I'm delighted with the result. But wait, what are these black spots on my foot? Rapidly moving forward. I repeated the same test with the Sony 90mm f2.8 macro with a one time magnification ratio. This time it took 30 pictures to cover the entire cornflake. There may be a logic behind this. Perhaps the larger the magnification ratio, the narrower the focus area gets. If you're watching this and you are an experienced macro photographer, please let us know in the comments. I did my math and because one is twice 0.5, I expected the rendered image to be twice as large as the previous one. Well, it looks more than twice as large. And those black stains on my cornflake looked at least twice as scary. And now the last test, the Lawa 100mm f2.8 macro with a 2 times magnification ratio. It is worth mentioning that this is a manual focus only lens. However, autofocus is pretty useless when shooting macro. And all the previous shots were also taken with manual focus. As I did with the other lenses, I got as close as I could possibly get to the subject and immediately realized I could not fit the whole thing in the frame. Of course, I could have moved backward and gotten the entire conflict in the frame, but that wasn't the purpose of this test. 
This is the result. This picture looks twice as big as the previous one and took 19 shots. Of course, considering I only shot half of the cornflake, we could assume that shooting the whole thing would have taken more than 40 shots overall. This last picture was the most difficult one. I had to repeat several takes because the lens was incredibly shaky. Although my camera had IBIS turned on, the other two lenses have optical stabilization, which helps a great deal. It's a lot shaky. If your style is handled, this is something to consider. You'd be better off with a lens that has optical stabilization. If you're like me and you don't mind setting a tripod and framing your shots with a calm and zen attitude, this lens is phenomenal. It's not out of focus, it doesn't have optical stabilization, but it's much cheaper than the rest of the bunch, providing higher magnification and more details in your pictures. Now that I got the hang of it, I can't wait to take more focus bracketing shots in the forest. However, I haven't yet tested it for portraits, and I feel that it will keep surprising me. Yet, the more significant takeaway of this test is that I won't ever eat that brand of cornflakes again. My job is over. I hope you liked the video. And if you did, it would mean the world to me if you could let me and YouTube know by dropping a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. It will motivate me to make more videos like this in the future. Hey, I'm Seb and I wish you a fantastic day. Peace.